to the virtual theatre scrubbing up session. So in this session we're going to teach you about entering theatre safely. So today we're going to be teaching you how to approach the theatre and to scrub in and to gown up. Um, first thing I want to make sure is obviously that I have my rings or braces or watches on and I have my scrub cap on. Then we're going to set out our um, equipment that we need. So we will need a warm gown, a pair of gloves and we want to make sure that we have our mask on before we start as well as a face shield. So this is the mask, it has an upper tie and a lower tie. So we're going to put this on and then tie it on top, making sure that it's well secured but not too tight. And then the lower edge and then I'm just going to press it on the nose, making sure that it stays where it is. So now we're ready to prepare the gown and gloves. So we're going to open the packaging for the gown. It's surrounded in a dark blue cover. Using the tabs on the edge of the cover, we're going to open it, making sure we don't touch the insides at all. Now we're going to open the double gloves. So the inner gloves will be the larger glove and the outer glove will be the normal size. So we're going to open the packaging at the top, making sure not to touch any of the inside packaging. So from a height above the gown, we're going to drop the gloves in. Now we're ready to scrub in. So we're going to take a scrub kit, which includes a brush and a nail tool. This is only used for the first scrub of the day. So we're just going to wet our hands and open the scrub tool kit taking out the nail tool. We're using our elbow, we're going to apply iodine onto our palm. Now we're going to clean under the nails using the nail tool provided in the kit. Now using circular movements, we're going to do an initial scrubbing, cleaning from the fingers to the elbows. We're going to rinse our hand and arm, making sure to start from the fingers, moving down to the elbow and not going back up the arm. So now let's begin the more thorough scrub by reapplying iodine or chlorhexidine onto our hands. So we're going to start with the rear of the hand, getting into the interdigital spaces. We're going to do the back of the thumb using circular motions, make sure to get the thenar web space. We're now going to interlock our fingers and do left to right movements. We're going to do the front of the hands, the palm, the interdigital space. Using circular motions, we're going to clean the wrists and up to the mid forearm. And now we're going to rinse our hand and arm, start from the fingers, moving up to the elbows, making sure not to go back up the arm. Close the tap using our elbow. So make sure that our hands are above our elbows. We're going to now dry our hands using the paper towels, using a padding motion, making sure not to drag the paper towel. Now we're going to gown up. So we're going to only touch the inside of the gown and put our hands into the sleeve compartment, letting the gown drop down, not shaking it. Then we're going to roll up the sleeves, make sure our hands remain inside the gown. And we're going to ask a theatre assistant to just close up the gown, so using the velcro strap at the top and the inner ties. We're then going to hand the assistant the tab. They only touch the purple section, we only touch the white or the external tie. And we're going to tie the gown externally without letting our fingers leave the gown. So to glove up, we need to open the packaging, making sure that it's uh, upside down facing towards us. We're going to pinch the glove at the edge of the folded region, making sure our thumb aligns with the thumb of the glove. Then we're going to use our other hand to pull the glove over onto our dominant hand, and then allowing our fingers into the spaces. We're going to repeat this on the non-dominant hand, so thumb goes to the thumb of the glove and then wrap the glove over. 
making sure our fingers never leave the inside of the gown until they are within the glove so that we're not actually touching the outside of the gloves. Then we're going to repeat this using the outer gloves. So the outer gloves are yellow whereas the inner gloves are typically coloured green. So now that we're gloved up, we're going to keep our hands close together and close to our body while moving around as to avoid touching things in the theatre. These are the two main types of scissors we use in theatres. This is a straight suture scissor and is used in cutting sutures. It is flat on both sides, whereas this is a Metzenbaum scissor used for blunt dissection and dividing tissue. It has a curved, sharp edge. Here we have needle holders in different sizes, and their use really depends on the depth at which the sutures need to be placed. They open and close at the ratchet, which locks it in place and ensures that the needle does not rotate. The ratchet is locked by pressing the thumb and the finger together and must be released with controlled movements by gently pressing down with the thumb on the ring of the holder. The inner surface of the needle holder has a crosshatch milling pattern which allows the needle to be held securely without it slipping. So this one that I'm holding would be used for suturing more superficially whereas this one would be used for intra-abdominal suturing due to the length. Next we have some forceps. So this is a toots forcep because it has these sharp bits which resemble teeth. It is used to hold tougher tissue, including skin and fascia. It, it exerts more pressure over a smaller surface area when holding, and so should not be used to hold delicate structures such as bowel or vessels, as it will create holes in these structures. This one is a non-traumatic, non-tooth de Bakey's forcep, and is used to handle less robust structures such as bowel, but gently so as not to crush the tissue that's being held. And the correct way to hold them is between the thumb and the forefinger, as demonstrated here. Forceps are also used in suturing to place and adjust the needle in the needle holder without directly handling it. So here we have our uh, scalpel blade handle, and that's the group for which the blade slides on. This is what it looks like after. This is a Rampley sponge holder used for holding swabs when preparing the skin at the start of an operation. It has these white set jaws to keep the swabs in place as the antiseptic solution is applied thoroughly to the skin. You will usually use about two to three of these before starting the operation. This is a Morris retractor. It is used to maintain a clear field when operating. It has a slip which prevents any slippage uh, whilst retracting. On the left we have lining backs of different sizes. This is a medium lining back, this is a smaller lining back, but they all essentially serve the same function. These are archery forceps in two different sizes. They are used to grasp or compress a potential bleeding vessel or when ligating vessels. It is for this reason that they are called hemostats. You may hear other names for archery forceps including mosquito, krills and spencer welds. You will see quite a few of these being used during certain operations. When releasing the ratchet on these, it's really important that it's done with care so as not to avulse the vessels. They do have a curved tip for better ergonomics so as to make it easier to clip around both sides of a vessel and also to make it easier when cutting above the clip. So on the right hand side we have the Little Woods forcep and on the left we have an Alice forcep or an Alice clamp. The Littlewoods forcep is used for holding heavy or robust structures such as the rectus sheath when closing the abdomen. It is toothed and so it makes it a traumatic forcep especially once the ratchet is locked. The Alice forcep also has sharp serrated teeth and is good for getting traction when clamped onto a structure. Both of these are quite traumatic forceps. The backwalk forceps is used to hold or grasp or pick up bowel and is not traumatic and this is because it has these broad flat edges to disperse the overall force across a wider area. 
It often doesn't have a ratchet on it to prevent any crushing of the tissue being held. Finally, we have a double-ended curette with a large and a smaller size on the other end. It is used for scraping material like debris during surgery and procedures including abscess drainage and or sebaceous cysts. The purpose of this is to scrape away any residual material that might be left inside you. It does have a slightly sharp edge so it mustn't be used with too much force.